Welcome back, tribe. Is the fatherlessness crisis destroying Gen Z? Let's get into it. What do you think a father brings to the table that a mother doesn't? My mom was kind of, she's like the head honcho of the house. And crime is caused by unwantedness and abortion reduces unwantedness. I lived my life for things that my dad wanted me to do. There really wasn't much I did with my father. He was a workaholic. My father was an alcoholic. Hi again. Hey dad, how are you? So today I'm out here and the question I'll be asking is, what is your relationship like with your father? When I was born, he was uh, still in the World War II, didn't come into my life till I was three or four years old, worked two jobs, didn't have much tolerance for kids. A little bit complicated. If you went to him for advice, you'd be like, yeah, yeah, you figure it out. Are you a father yourself? I have numerous children, roughly somewhere in between 30 and 45, because in my 20s, I was a sperm donor. I'm curious, have you met any of them? Or? I have not. Okay. I'm more of a mama's boy for sure. She carries a lot of the emotional weight in my life. I talk to my dad almost twice a week, but uh, I love my dad. He loves me. Growing up, it was always some I lived my life for things that my dad wanted me to do. How has that like evolved, though? A few years, we weren't really communicating or talking. And so nowadays, he stops and listens to me. I'm Jim Sexton. I'm a divorce lawyer in New York City. I've been practicing divorce law for about 22 years. If you don't mind me asking, what was your relationship with like your father. My father was an alcoholic, hardly spoke to me, but never laid hands on me, never abused me. This is a man who had all the men in his wedding party die in Vietnam, lost most of his friends in Vietnam, and then he got sober when man. my mom died. I finally said to him, like, listen, I'm done with you. She's dead. We don't have anything left to talk about, you and I. We've never talked about this before in, in an interview. When one in four American homes are fatherless, it's clear that it's a growing problem. And so Gen Z especially are turning to others for guidance, and some are providing that, but some have capitalized. For all my young boys out there, you guys wanna know why I'm successful? I never took a girl seriously, ever. So I wanna explore the impact of the fatherlessness crisis, not only for the next generation, but for past generations as well. But is this crisis just a symptom of a larger problem? And more importantly, how can I overcome my own struggles with my own father? I guess we gon' see. Can you just give like a quick rundown of who you are and what you do? I run a online space called The Tin Men, a platform for discussing various political and social issues that impact men and boys. Everybody needs to go and follow The Tin Men on Instagram. I absolutely love it. You said that your mission is to essentially explore the forgotten gaps of the gender debate. Would you say that this fatherlessness crisis is a forgotten gap in the gender debate here today? There's an interesting theory called Donahue Levitt theory. In the 1990s in America, New York was having a massive violent crime surge and a lot of criminologists were like terrified and then it went up and up and up and up and up and then it came drastically down against all expectations and everyone was falling over themselves trying to explain why. Two economists, Levitt and Donahue, came along and proposed this very controversial theory. The answer is probably women winning reproductive rights 15, 20 years before. So instead of forcing a woman to have a child that she can't afford or doesn't want, that child has an increased likelihood of becoming a criminal later in life. And crime is caused by unwantedness and abortion reduces unwantedness. Today, like, is violent crime also being caused by a lack of fatherlessness, a lack of committed fathers? So if feeling unwanted is one cause for why people commit crime, having a present father can only help, especially when most crimes are committed by men. So I wanted to ask the streets on what value a father has. What do you think a father brings to the table that a mother doesn't? How to fix your car or something or gardening outside. So we do a lot of the like the manual tasks together. I don't know. My mom was kind of, she's like the head honcho of the house and mm. like he's there for like support. My dad was the breadwinner. He's very stable, logical. Well, it's sort of like what does a man bring to a relationship? What does a woman bring to the relationship? When you find someone to marry, look at the relationship she has with her father because that's her role model and that's the relationship she's going have with you you see what i mean and this is what i tell you guys all the time you have to base your woman's relationship and her father as a foreshadowing for how you're going to be treated with her so a lot of the issues that men run into today is the princess syndrome you guys we've all made this mistake get with a girl that's very quote high maintenance stuck up um, used to getting her way has always been told yes never told no and when you look at the relationship with the father most likely he was one of these beta bobs, no spine, never said no to his daughter, his wife, or any other woman in his life. He has absolutely no experience with women. And he essentially spoils his daughter so that when the next man picks up the task of providing for her, protecting for her, 
she doesn't appreciate anything you do. It's normal for her to walk all over you. It's expected for you to be a little slave and bust open your wallet for her. Anything less than being a simp with a wallet and a beating heart is unacceptable. These are the kinds of women that don't appreciate men. Unfortunately, today we have a lot of weak fathers. So forget the part where a father's not even present in the home, which is already a huge problem. The nuclear family should have never been abolished in the way we've abolished it today. But a father that's weak in his relationship will spoil his children, men and women, when they are adults looking for healthy, stable, intimate, long-term relationships of themselves. It's very simple, man. We're little sponges when we're kids, and we mimic what our parents do. If you're raised in an environment where your parents fight all the time, they're always arguing, they may get physical with one another, you're going to do similar things. Very rarely, once in a while, you get a kid that comes out of an environment where, for example, say your dad's a heavy drinker, he may have hit you or your mom, you just saw what an alcoholic father was like. You have two paths in life. You either turn into an alcoholic yourself because the pressure, the stress, the trauma from an alcoholic father in that childhood turned you into one, or you swear off alcohol completely and you don't touch the stuff. They couldn't even put a gun in your head and make you drink because of the trauma you dealt with. Unfortunately, many people break. So when you're vetting your partner, you need to absolutely look at the father and the way he's treated in the household, the way he runs the household, if he even runs the household. Because the narrative in mainstream society today and all the TV shows and Hollywood and all that is that the you know, typical American or Western father is a bumbling idiot who can't even hardly tie his shoes. He's good for the paycheck he brings in. And the woman, aka the wife, has to do everything and she's the matriarch of the family. It's that stupid narrative that they keep pushing on us as men that we're supposed to surrender our finances, surrender our ability to lead our families, and somehow this relationship is expected to succeed, is expected to do well in the long term, as if we don't see the divorce rates skyrocketing, the amount of people cheating on one another, the amount of babies that are being had now, which is damn near zero. We're not having kids anymore. All the statistics are pointing in the wrong direction. And it's because we've forgotten our gender roles. You're expecting men to be feminine and you're expecting women to be masculine. And all of a sudden this inverse, it's supposed to somehow work when the natural world already gave us clear defined paths for our genders and their roles in a relationship and raising children. But you know, we like to play God, so we're going to pretend that we know better, the hubris of man. We're not even pretending. We think we know better than the Creator, the Almighty, whoever that is, whatever that is, intelligent design or God or whatever you want to call him. doesn't matter. We as humans pretend we know better, that we are God ourselves. And now look at what's happening. We can't even sustain population growth. We're supposed to be the most stable we've ever been in the most peaceful time that's ever been, in the most decadent society that's ever lived, yet we can't even produce healthy families. We can't even produce above replenishment rate on births. How insane is that? Is that not a symptom of a sick society? There's something fundamentally wrong with the way we have created society in the modern world that we're going to go extinct eventually. Isn't that insane? That the only way we're possibly up above the replenishment rate is like, unfeathered access at the southern border where we're allowing millions of migrants to cross every year or what's happening in europe same shit with the migrants how is it that a stable rich wealthy safe society cannot produce children explain that think about that isn't this the best environment to make children to raise children think about it man there's something sick about our society that people would rather not have children, can't even have children if they wanted to. If the person you choose is not just your spouse, but possibly a future mother or father, fatherlessness doesn't just impact crime, but how people show up in relationships. And so who better to ask than a divorce lawyer about this? And the statistics, by the way, we, could, if we can gleam over them really quickly. It's 70, 80 to 90% of homeless people, drug addicts, mental illness, and whatever other horrible statistics are out there happen because of single parent households, single mother to be exact. We don't want to talk about it though. We really don't because it's empower women, strong boss, babe, independent. You do it. I, I'm the man and the woman in this relationship. I've been my son's father. I have been my daughter's father when he wasn't there. 
And then look at the statistics. They speak for themselves. And it pisses a lot of people off because more and more it's being normalized in society today. You're being raised by a single mother. And there's going to be people in the conversation, well, my mother did a really good job with me. Yeah, well, 10,000 other versions of you didn't. The other 10,000 statistically failed horribly, are probably dead, in jail, have achieved nothing in life, got addicted to drugs, or ended up homeless at a 70, 80, 90% clip. But you, the magic one that made it out with your strong mommy, is obviously the rule, not the exception. Unreal, dude. You could be an excellent parent and just not be good at being a spouse. You might be mismatched with your partner. I mean, a lot of people choose their romantic partners between the ages of 18 and 30. Or you may be the type that you grow apart and you become more, you know, dissimilar. I think the more normal reason why fathers are minimized unintentional second order effects of the boom in divorce, the boom in how much people work and the impact that has on their available time for their families. It's a lot of things all at once. And so whether due to divorce or absence, it's clear husbands and fathers have distinct roles and impact. Mothers with absent or distant husbands are not only at a higher risk of developing antenatal depression, but fatherless children are also at risk. Girls without fathers are eight times more likely to have teenage pregnancies, while fatherless boys often exhibit aggression, delinquency, and an increased likelihood of committing a crime. And so oftentimes having a father or not can either set you ahead or set you behind. And so I was curious to ask the divorce lawyer on what impact his alcoholic father had on his life. The goal I think of father Hood is to move things a little further, maybe six, seven months after she passed away. And he called me, you know, I just want to let you know I'm, I've quit drinking and I'm going to AA. And I hung up the phone and I thought, you know what, you should give this guy a win on this. Like he made progress. And so we'll come back to the rest of his story, but man, <laughs> That was inspirational for me to hear. Because as he said, if the purpose of fatherhood is to make progress, it made me think, what role can I play in improving my father and I's relationship? Like what steps can I take now to move towards a better future, especially when I'm a dad myself? I was beginning to form an idea, but with a lot of things in my mind from my daddy issues to. Yeah, man, this is an important one because we all don't have good relationships with our father. I was blessed to have one good enough. And even then it could still be improved. But one day we will be fathers for the, for those of us that aren't yet. And one day you'll come to the realization when you're looking at your own son, and I've thought about this, that you're going to finally fully understand what your father was going through with you. And for those of you that are holding on to grudges, that may be a pivotal moment in your life where you forgive your father for all the mistakes he's made because he's only human, just like you, making mistakes along the way, just like you are when you have your own kid. And you know, if you can keep that in mind, I think it'll go a long way for you making a phone call like this and bringing your father back into the fold of your life if you've kicked him out or if you have an icy relationship in general, just reaching out and talking more. You may be surprised. We don't all have good fathers. Some of them are absolutely terrible, but life is always too short to hold a grudge and there's no restart on this. We only get one shot. Might as well try to make the best of it on exploring what's exactly causing this crisis. I think people need to stop having children. They want to have kids as an accessory. It's expensive and there is a lot of pressure on the man to bring money to the table and that could be another thing that scares a lot of men. Lack of strong marriages, the family unit isn't as tight anymore. It has somewhat to do with women finding their ground and comfortable with being independent, which I think is a great thing. And so when asking across generations, there's many reasons. But again, when one in four American homes are without fathers, and Gen Z are turning to digital father figures, are they at least getting the guidance that they need? Would you say that the problems that Gen Z are currently experiencing are explained by the fatherlessness crisis? I do feel like a lack of positive male role models, especially in the media, is an emerging and increasing problem. And we've gone from Mr. Rogers, now we have like Homer Simpson, Peter Griffin, basically clowns, poor reflection of masculinity and fathers especially. I know in the UK that Advertising Standards Authority had to actually step in to ban adverts that routinely framed dads as incompetent. So when this fatherlessness crisis seems like a symptom of a larger problem that's getting worse and worse, why aren't more people talking about it? 
Why do you think this topic of male issues have become so polarized? And what impact has that had on being able to hold discourse? The left have failed them even more so than the right. The right has in, in some way at least tried to take hold of the conversation, largely through people like Andrew Tay, uh, Fresh and Fit, and who I do not like. They are a symptom of a wider problem, which is how the left have sort of forgotten boys and men. And although there certainly are advantages to being a man, it's a bit more nuanced than that. Men and boys are increasingly conservative anyway, and women and girls are becoming increasingly liberal. That's exactly right. With 44% of Gen Z women identifying as liberal compared to 25% of Gen Z men, this marks the largest gender gap since polling began in 1998. And the right is capitalizing on that trend. Republican Party candidate Vivek Ramaswamy has supported the importance of the nuclear family in the two. This division is only going to grow because women like to look at the state as a welfare state. Essentially, they, vo they vote in one major block to divvy up resources amongst themselves. Socialism, essentially. This is how women vote for the protection of the tribe as a whole and their place in it. Men, on the other hand, will always be more conservative in general because they want to make it with their own two hands, no handout, as a man should, as a man was told to be and expected of. When they were growing up, they didn't want any help or very little. They like to be competitive. They're told that what it means to be a man is to provide and protect anyways. And so there's an underlying utility that you must have as a man. Now, somewhere along the way in the last 30, 40, 50 years, that underlying utility has been devalued because of the modernization of society. Think of technological advancements where factory line workers are being replaced with robots. Think women entering the workforce so a man you know, being dependent on to provide is no longer as important. And then you have, uh, well, let's just say the third one is the general consensus or narrative of society to demonize men and say it's patriarchal system, it's oppression of women, yada, yada. So, and there's a bunch of other variables, but that un underlying utility has all but vanished. Now that has left men in the world today, in the West, completely lost on what is masculinity what is their place in the world and what value do they bring to society? I think this issue is barely begun and it's about to explode parabolically. The economics are completely twisted. We can't have families anymore. We can't afford housing anymore. Uh, wages have not kept up with inflation, anything whatsoever. It's crushing a man's ability to be independent and support a family. Coupled with the isolationism that most men are feeling from social media, dating apps, just the technological advancements in general, that parabolic rise is what gives and what will give figures like Tate, Fresh and Fit, channels like this, other channels they consider far right, whatever it is, the online fathers that these men never had, the direction of what it means to be a man, what is masculinity, what were our forefathers like, and how can we mimic traditional masculinity in the modern world today? It's a very simple question the left can't answer. What does it mean to be a man today? They've completely glossed over it with feminine ideology, feminine characteristics, nothing that resonates anything remotely close to what a man feels inside. And that has left a massive gap for all the people mentioned above to take over. The division is only going to grow and tremendously so because each side is digging their heels in. The right's becoming more radical on the right. The left is becoming more radical on the left. The ideas are crazier and crazier. The adversarial energy has already kicked off, we can tell, by the tribalism, by politics, by men versus women, by just society in general today. You look at your neighbor as an enemy. If something's happening to a woman in public, what do men say today? Good luck, sis. Equal rights, equal lefts. Oh, isn't this what you wanted? Strong, independent. You don't need a man. You got this. Pick yourself up by your own bootstrap, right? That's the general narrative and the feelings of men today. In the other side of the aisle, it's just as bad. And their messaging is men are completely useless and there's no need for them in society whatsoever, which couldn't be further from the truth. We're both drifting apart further and further, becoming lonelier and lonelier, more and more bitter, more and more upset vying for the same thing, family, marriage. But we can't see that because all the information that's being distilled into our heads from online, from wherever the hell you're getting your media from in the world today, which is all propaganda most of the time, is telling us that we're going in the right direction, that this is the correct path, that it is every man for himself, that they are the issue. But they is never pointed at the right person. It's they 
above. Not they, the women. Not they, the men. No, it's they make the laws. They who are corrupt. They who want to take our rights away. It's those people that are causing the problems. How else can you explain such a broken economic model in society today that doesn't allow a man to provide for his family, that forces two people to work nonstop, hardly any savings, still can't afford a house, can't afford a baby, is dependent on they to give them handouts, therefore never able to protest and ask for something better, living paycheck to paycheck, your purchasing power disappearing, Say goodbye to the American dream. That was dead a long time ago. Can't afford the white picket fence house and a dog anymore. That's fake. That's something you're only reserved for your grandpappy. Of all that, you have society today. And you can feel the anger, the anxiety, the depression, the loneliness, the isolation in everybody, in men and women. And it manifests online in hate. Sad, man. Parent household. And he has criticized American culture and government for pushing anti family incentives. And yep. many right wing influencers and organizations are following suit. But if we're going to look at it both sides, is this an attempt by the right to pander male voters, similar to how the left has targeted women, according to George? Whatever be the case, it's clear that the issue is more complex with numerous factors rather than the simplistic perspectives of just blaming women. So the most important question is what is the solution? As a divorce lawyer, how do we fix this fatherlessness? crisis from a legal level people learn through fear and greed they do the right thing because they're afraid of getting in trouble so we have to create consequences for the serious problem of alienating children from a father or mother i'm tired of men being bashed we put men on the moon for god's sake men are less often the primary physical parent who's a stay-at-home parent that therefore they couldn't or they're they're not as good at it i don't think that's even vaguely true all the research shows that children have better outcomes outcomes when they have substantial, meaningful access to mothers and fathers. I'm curious, what is something that you did as a father that your father didn't to your kids? We did everything with our kids. There really wasn't much I did with my father. And in fairness to him, he was a workaholic. How did fatherhood change you as a man? Took the focus off of me. Realized that, that my kids were essentially everything. Fatherhood, it holds a mirror up to you. If you saw somebody drop their wallet and no one would ever see it, a lot of people would go, yeah, just stick it in my pocket then. And if you say to them, what would you tell your kid to do? That's the real test of their morality. We give up on ourselves a lot faster than we give up on our kids. So with that in mind, I was curious about the outcome between the divorce lawyer and his father and how I could apply it to my own struggles with my father. About a year or two later, he was really a different person. He would send me text messages like, I'm so proud of you. And I remember I was like, yeah, f you. You wanna have a catch now? You know, come on, man. Like I learned how to not need that. And then I realized like, yeah, that's my stuff. And that's not healthy to carry around. So I um, worked through it. We developed in the last like four or five years now uh, since that like we have a very lovely relationship I see him differently now growing up my dad was by no means an alcoholic or abusive in fact quite the opposite he was always there for me and really gave me a great childhood but like I'm sure some of you watching can relate as I've gotten older I've realized that I've never had that type of relationship that I've desperately wanted as a kid from a father I call it lack of trust or emotional connection but at a certain period it's gotten to a point where i've developed resentment where even a simple phone call from him was stressful and in many ways it's come a long way but it's been seven months since i've even visited or talked to him on the phone i hope that now that when my own sons if they become fathers someday that they will that's so crazy to hear as an immigrant, dude, that you don't speak to your own family. This blew me away about my American friends. How they would go, this kid went seven months. Seven months without speaking to your parents? I just talked to them a few hours ago. I talked to them every other day if I'm not home. When I was off in college on the other side of the United States, I talked to them at least once a week. And even that felt too long. It's so strange, man, when you come from a place that's traditional, that values family. I values the man and the woman coming together to see the way Americans treat their kids, kick them out at 18. Haven't talked to my parents, my grandparents in years. That blew me away. What do you mean you don't talk to your mom in years? What do you mean you're not close to your parents? Is that a symptom of a sick society or what? Come on, man. That's not normal. And that shouldn't be normal. And it shouldn't be accepted as the norm. And people wonder why society is so messed up today. Look at how we treat our own blood, man.
will move the ball a little further. Maybe they won't be workaholics like I was. It's never too late to, I think, become a better father or a better son. And I think there's real value in it. Because if the goal of fatherhood is to continue moving things along, then what the hell was I doing as a son to make that happen? Because things will always get busier and busier. But if we're too busy to even talk to the person who's raised right us since I've had in my diapers, what kind of father am I going to be when I have kids? Again. Hey, Dad. How are you? How are you? Uh, okay. Happy holidays. Where are you? Uh, I'm in Brazil right now. <laughs> How's everything? Okay. okay. How are you enjoying there? Good. 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 I've been following your activities. <laughs> <laughs> and how are you guys getting along there? Good. Good. Everything's been good. good. Yeah. Okay. And what's going on now? No. Uh, just wanted to call. I, I haven't talked to you in a while, so. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 I'm just gonna, uh, are you going to, El, aren't you going to El Salvador? Yeah, I think maybe next month, we'll see. Okay, it's, it's not kind of up in the air, you can, you can go anytime you want. <laughs> I mean, I guess now, yeah, I don't, I don't have a job, <laughs> just, just doing this full time, but yeah. Uh, how do you like that freedom? I mean, it's great, it's great, but I mean, obviously it's also more pressure, you know what I mean? Yeah, everybody I talk to, they, they think you're, you're just great to distance. You have the winning formula. I mean, if you reflect on what you have achieved, I mean, like, uh, how many of you at your age have succeeded what you have done? I just want you to know that uh, I'm proud of you because you, you're very honest with yourself. You know, that conversation got heavy <laughs> before he cut it off. It's good for him, man. So it's not just that, it's the lack of parenting in general. Too many millennial parents let iPads and phones raise their children. That's also very true. I think dads get the short end of the stick. Some dads work all the time and hard jobs come home exhausted and are not there due to just being tired, too tired to parent. My dad worked 12 hours a day, manual job, six days a week outside. He came home exhausted. He pretty much showered, ate, maybe read before falling asleep. My mom was a stay at home that was there for us, but never bad mouthed my dad told us your dad works hard to provide respect that he breaks his back literally for us. I think people take for granted how hard fathers work to provide for their families. Yeah, and that one basically was my childhood. My father was not really present because he worked in construction from morning to night. Sometimes it would be like six by five, six a.m. He's out the door. Sometimes he didn't come home as late as nine. He was just grinding to give us any sense of a normal life. So I have absolute respect for those blue collar men that are busting their ass. They're invisible. They are too tired to parent. Their only objective is to bring home money to make sure the family is okay. And that's tough, man. That also made me reflect on when I have kids, what kind of father I want to be. And one of the biggest things that pops up in my brain is being present. I want to be there for my kids. I don't want to be the dad that has to clock in and be gone all day. I understand that that's a luxury. It's a privilege to be able to have that because most men have no choice, which is why I've waited to have kids so long because I wanted to be as financially secure as I possibly could be. But one of the most important lessons that I got in my life growing up is that having a present father is irreplaceable. I had some luck in this realm because I would be outside playing with my friends all day and one of my friends, his dad was home all the time. And he would come out and play basketball with us, play football with us. And it was a daily thing for hours on end. And so I got to experience what an active father was like while my father was away working all the time too. I got extremely lucky in this regard. And that's something as a man I would like to pass down to my children. Because I was getting into some bad things as well. I was starting to act out. I did have issues from my father not being present in my life. Although working very hard to make sure I had everything. As a kid, you need the attention of your father. You need him to lay down boundaries. And some of the, fo the fondest memories I've had with my father was the very little time he did have off from work. We'd go do things like fishing. I remember fishing with my dad as if it was yesterday. How he would have one day off during the week and that was the day we planned to go fishing. And we would drive so far away to get to this big river to get to our little spot so we can go fishing, catch some fish, bring them home and make them fresh. Those are the fond memories. And it doesn't take much. Unfortunately, society today, the economics are so screwed up that a lot of boys, even when their fathers are present, they're not really there in the present with them. It's just not fair for a lot of kids growing up. And I understand 
And this is what I mean when I talk about there is a sickness in our society today that even when you do all the right things as a man, you still come up short in some way or another. You make money. Oh, well, you work too much. And therefore, your kid isn't emotionally stable because you weren't there to provide the emotional stability to emotionally invest in your kid. Oh, you're home all day, emotionally investing in your kid, making him stable in that fashion. Ah, well, the money's off now. Your wife is probably working. There's issues in that dynamic. Income has made things unstable at home. New stressors of money have been introduced. There's almost no winning. And that's what it feels like sometimes. You have to make what amounts to hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in the Western world today, because most of us to get a good paying job have to live somewhere in the city where it's super expensive. There's going to be some people that talk about, well, I live in the middle of fucking nowhere and it's $50,000 a year. You could be great. Yeah, well, your next door neighbor is like five miles away. That's not ideal for most people. That's not even feasible for most people. For the average person with average skills, they need to work in a city to have a job that's decent enough paying, which unfortunately gets absolutely eaten up by the cost of living of being in said city. So the reality for the average man, for most men, is your paycheck is not enough. And even if it is enough and you're earning hundreds of thousands of dollars, the time sink, the requirement for you to constantly be there is also a double-edged sword because it is negatively impacting your family emotionally. How many stories of, he's a good man, he's providing, but I just felt invisible. You know, the divorces you hear where the women are like, he did everything right, he worked, he provided for us but I just didn't feel like he was there. We had zero intimacy. And a lot of men will hear that and be extremely pissed because I did my job. Why couldn't you do yours and just stick it out with me? Which I totally understand. But imagine as well, if you're a man on the opposite side of the aisle where your woman is working all the time, and I know that sounds strange, but in the modern world today, that could be a thing. And it is for quite a few men where your woman works all the time and you're at home with the kids. Again, I don't recommend that dynamic in a relationship, but she's never there to be emotionally intimate with you. It's just somebody that goes to work, comes home, goes to work, comes home. At one point, do you feel so isolated that you step out of your own marriage? It happens, man. They didn't say they never said relationships were easy and the modern world is complicating them to the point that too many of them are failing at too high of a rate and we all pay for it. Look at the state of society today. Anywho, see you on the next one.